Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hair Chew for 2021. And uh, you remember Jordan, she was here last year. Actually, you were the last, actually you were the Christmas oh, edition. Yeah. And what a beautiful Christmas present that would have been. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you guys also know Jordy is uh, pretty much the life support for me. Without her, I'd probably die. Don't take that the wrong way, I feel bad. Don't ever leave me, Jordan. <laughs> um, but we're gonna do a hair today and uh, we've discussed making her even lighter. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Everyone can see what it's looking like from last time. A little bit of a before and after. Um, it's grown out really well. Yeah. I think that's something worth mentioning. When did I cut your hair? Like literally, yeah, was it? The start of November. Start of November. So I was a bit of a delay because you were a Christmas edition. Yeah. Let's continue with a similar technique because obviously as we speak about often, it's very important that clients feel like they're not sort of bottled into some high maintenance schedule with their hair. Um, and obviously Geordie works in a hair salon. I mean, she pretty much runs the place. Um, and she could have her hair done whenever she wants, but she hasn't needed to. And if she needed to, I'm sure, even though you don't like asking, you would say, hey, do my hair. <laughs> we're gonna uh, get started, but let's talk about what we're gonna do first. So I'm gonna use a similar technique to last time, combination of sort of back combing and um, weaving. And if you wanted to see what I did last time, the video is in the um, video list. It's really important that, as I said, we look after the gears. So I'm gonna use the Light Master from Matrix with Bonder inside. Now, that's not some miracle cure where you can just go and go in really hard with someone's hair and blast it out. You still have to consider the fact that hair that's previously been lightened is gonna be sensitive. So where the regrowth is, I may use 30 volt, and then where the, um, where the hair's already lightened, I might use like 20 or even 10 volt, just to sort of clean that out. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about why and how um, when we get to that, but um, should get started, huh? We had a bit of trouble with the audio, so we've been here for uh, like an hour longer than we should already because thanks to the proud people at I won't name which brand who sell the most expensive IT products on the planet, they don't always work. So, anyway, we've got it sorted, we'll get started. Yeah. See you soon. Okay, so in the interest of time, you can see that I've started the foils. So, underneath here, you can see Jordan's hair is quite um, dark. And the reason being is obviously she's naturally brunette, but we concentrated on a balayage effect last time. So the color was mainly through the top and the sides where you could see it. So now to get some color in there, for me, the best way to get color into the hair quickly is to do slices. So um, underneath there, we've used the light mask with bottom inside and 30. And um, you can see I'm just doing horizontal sections. And then once I get to around about the occipital bone, that's when I'll go back to doing that more traditional balayage look. And for me, I do back combing because that for me is how you ensure it grows out really well um, once you get to the top here and around the hairline. So I'm gonna keep uh, on putting these foils in and um, I'll uh, come back and have a bit more of a chat to you when I get to the top. Okay, so you can see I've placed those foils underneath to get that color in. Now we go into um, the part where I like to back comb. So, um, as I said, this diffuses the root and makes it grow out better. Um, and this is what we're gonna do for the rest of the head. So this underneath was purely about making sure we get as much color in as we can or remove as much color out of the underneath as we can. Um, so now it's into using our technique, back combing the hair in. Um, and then we put the, the foil in. If you're finding that you're doing this, let me just one sec. That's what the great spray from Matrix is good for. I get the volume fixer. And if you're just finding that because Geordie, even, even though she was having a hair done today, I could tell she would have shampooed it twice. Um, you just give it a little mist here. That's the one there. And that way it just allows you to, to get that little bit more traction on the, on the hair. Um, if you're finding um, that it's difficult to get in. So there's a little tip FYI. And I also, once I get to the top like this, I actually start to do one side at a time. So you'll see that I actually will do five foils on one side and then five, five on the other to get to where I need to go on the top. But with this, I actually, um, I just like to do one side at a time, just because for me, when you're doing these sort of techniques, it's actually a visually balanced thing. 
and to get visual balance, you can see that instead of just section one side at a time, I actually did that V there across the whole head so I can make sure that I, as I said, put the color in the right place so that it has synergy and balance on both sides. Don't be um, trying to spread the color with uh, powder lightener. Um, from my experience, um, saturation is key. Don't try and spread it too far. At the same time, don't waste it, um, but make sure that you get really good saturation through the hair. If you're doing this technique and you're using quite large sections, sometimes what I'll do is actually put some lightener on the actual foil, the hair down and then lightener on top so that you make sure you get it pressed right, right the way through. I'm going to continue to do that all the way to the top until we get to the side and then you'll see us again once we get to the side there. One of the things I say a lot is clients love consistency, yeah? So I find that when we weave the hair free-handed, it's very hard to get it consistent. Um, so this is like a, a comb that allows you to actually weave the hair and I'll, I'll show you how it works. But it allows you to weave the hair um, and you can get it the same each time you do it. Like it's basically guaranteed consistency. So that's why I've started using this. I really like it. So I'll show you how that works. Always going to leave some natural hair out of the hairline. So I don't know if you guys can see there, but I'll, we'll zoom in. I'll come around this way. And it should start zooming in now. But you basically push the, basically push the hair down and then you run your finger along there and it separates the hair for you perfectly. And here we get to do that. So we get that one out of the way and it gives me this perfect section here to be able to color the hair. Put the lightener in and it won't be streaky because um, this comb, I don't know if you can, I'll zoom in again, it should be zoomed in now. You can see uh, how beautiful those um, really fine weaves are on this um, foil. And then what I do is um, the top one I leave out. So it actually is going to have like natural hair blending, just a tiny little bit of natural hair, but it's going to diffuse that lightened hair underneath. So if you um, want one of these, send me a DM and I'll tell you where to get one from. Almost at the end now, fours are in here, in there, both sides, and now it's to the top. You need to work all the way back horizontally like this until we get to here. Um, by the time they're in, I'm probably going to have to rinse the back here because um, I'd say they'll be processed. If, if they are, I'll always recommend um, starting in the back for that reason so that you can rinse the back if you need to, especially when you're doing applications like this. They can take time and nothing, seldom is something that's done fast going to give you a better result. The first thing I'm going to do in the hairline is I'm going to do a baby light as I've done at the bottom and it's very important that you pick up these hairs in the corner. Do you see that one there? These fine hairs, you've got to pick these up and we're actually going to do a little baby light all the way around here. Actually we might do it horizontal and then we'll do them back to back. Baby light comb goes in, you pull the hair down your finger goes underneath, you pull the hair up. Look at that, look how perfect that is. We just section this part out of the way. We'll grab that in a minute. And you can see that that allows me, I'll zoom in here, you get really nice and close to the root. You've probably seen through the, the time lapse where I've had the music on that I go from one brush to then the other because where the hair's already blonde, I'm using 20 vol, and on the new hair, I'm using 30 vol. Then I hold this, and we're just gonna really bring this down nice and tight. 
fold the bottom over the 20 vol. So the 20 vol, or the hair that you wanted to um, keep away from getting the uh, 30 vol on it is protected like that. If that moves during that process, don't be scared to go back and sort of um, re-lock that in, I guess you could say. Just pull that down again to be, be sure. And then we're gonna fold that onto the top and make sure that we get nice and close to the hairline. Even though we're gonna do a root stretch, I still wanna keep it as close as I can. And just for here, it's really important that you keep them flat because otherwise that will affect your next few sections. And again, comb goes in, pull the hair down quite tight, scoop the hair on the top out. We leave all that underneath away and then we put the foil in between that. Again, using 30 volt on the uncolored hair, holding it with your fingers to just bring it down tighter. Don't go too close, you don't want to get any bleeding. And then 20 volt on the hair that's already light because we want to clean that out. And again, when you move the foil around, sometimes it can slip a bit. We just want to keep it as close as we can. And then we're going to fold the 20 vol hair out of the uh, first so that it doesn't go on to the hair that we want to protect. Or well, sorry, to the hair that has no, um, or the hair that has 30 vol on it that hasn't been lightened. We don't want to press that up against it because it'll end up um, over processing it and that's where you get damage. Colour's done. Um, foils are in. Recap, started in the back. We did slices. Um, we went all the way up. As I said, because the hair was really dark there, we need to get a lot of colour out of there. So we removed a lot of colour from there. Once we got to the occipital bone, I went into um, back combing panels, came into the hairline. I used the baby lighter comb. Um, I'll actually, I'll put a link in the description so you can see where you can buy them. I don't sell them. I just um, found it. I think I've, I got it one of the uh, online salon supplies place. So I'll put a link there. Um, then we used uh, baby lights through the hairline and through here, just so when the hair comes back, it's nice and fine, doesn't grow out too harshly. And then again, as we did above the occipital bone in the back, through the top, um, we've done those back comb panels and I've clipped the back so Jordan can see. We'll process that. We're probably gonna have some lunch. And then when we come back, we're gonna talk about what toner we're gonna to use. So I'll see you guys soon. Whee! We are back from the basin. I guess I should give you a little bit of a recap about what we did because uh, you can see that Jordan has now been um, rinsed, toned, and she's about to be styled. Um, so while I tell you what I did during those moments, I'm gonna to talk to you about this. So I'm gonna use a little bit of volume builder just in the roots for volume, obviously. And I also like to put some in through the front there because that's where we like to get some shape in the hair and then smooth set on the ends. It's a great blow drying balm. Don't need a lot, a little bit. Always comb that through, make sure that products taken for evenly. Let's talk about the color. I rinsed the back first and these few little panels in the hairline because obviously the hair is finer there so it lightens faster. I was actually a bit stubborn. We actually um, had to leave that for probably close to like 45 minutes or so. When I've taken to the basin, I've uh, dropped a root down and I always do that for the growing out thing. So we spoke about how we want it to be low maintenance and not grow out really hard. So that's good because that will blur the uh, highlight we put in with the natural color, but also like it because it puts a shadow in around the hairline. So in around here, um, it's also going to keep it dark, which I think uh, is nice. Half uh, 8M, half 5N. So we've got somewhere around the sort of 6, 7-ish level. Um, and then onto our ends, we did um, 8M with uh, this, sorry, this is all matrix color sync, I should say. So this is all um, uh, semi-permanent color. We did, um, let me start from the lighter. So we did SPP, so 20 grams of SPP, 20 grams of 8M, 20 grams of 10P. And that's a toner. What we're gonna do now, no haircut today because Jordan didn't need one. It hasn't been long since we've uh, cut her hair. I'm just gonna style it. Um, so I'm gonna wrap dry it. Um, and then I'm probably gonna just do a little bit of cutting, like maybe like a bang trim, fringe trim, just around the front. And then we're gonna talk about styling. So let me start with the drying. Thank you, Jordan. And she said that this hairdryer was nice and light. So this is the GHD hairdryer, so.
look good, really good. So as we spoke about, Jordan's happy with the length, but I think we need to trim here a little bit. I just feel like it's, I know it's a bit closed in, so let's um, give that a little adjustment, then we'll get straight into some styling. This is easy for me, and I've spoken about this in previous videos, why I cut hair like this, because for me now to go and cut this, or trim this back in for Jordan from her last haircut is really easy because when I do this, I know that this is how I cut it. And if I'm telling the truth, when I spin a sideways, this should end up in a perfect triangle with no little bits hanging out the top. Look at that. So this is why, the way, this is why I cut hair the way I do is because I don't cut my client's hair every time. Sometimes they just want, um, like I guess, for me, this is no different to like a fringe trim. We're just adjusting the shape around the front and it's so quick and easy for me to do. Even if Jordan came in like, well, she works here, but let's pretend she doesn't. If Jordan came in after work one day and said, oh, I just need Adam to adjust my bangs because I'm feeling, a bit, I'm feeling a bit long around the face, but everywhere else is good, then she can literally jump in the chair. Um, Jordan could put a cape around Jordan because um, that's usually what Jordan does for me. And um, I can just quickly trim this in. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm not gonna make it too much shorter. I just wanna, when we wear it with movement, I wanna be able to see her cheeks because she's got good ones, good cheekbones, good face structure. Otherwise, I just feel like it's too like at long, it, like it, it drags her down a little bit. So this is a really good, uh, good catch, darling, thank you. This is a really good um, example of why I, I cut hair the way I do. It's because it's easy to um, make those adjustments. And look, as a commercial hairdresser, do we always have time to cut the entire haircut every time? No, so what this allows us to do is, okay, the ends look good. Um, I just need to adjust here and here so we can make edits to the existing shape without having to recut the entire haircut. These are all things that just help us uh, in terms of efficiency and time with our clients and also in terms of our profitability because um, it's, you know, especially now post COVID, you know, there's a lot of people out there hurting with um, business. Um, and um, now more than ever, we need to be, obviously we need to work safe and we need to be aware of that, but we also need to make sure that um, we're working efficiently and we, we're, we're, we're profitable because um, I'm sure I'm not the only one that has a little bit of catching up to do uh, because of COVID. Um, so for all of you guys that are out there um, that have hung in there tough, well done, don't give up, make sure you hang in there and um, just plug away at it bit by bit. Um, it gets easier and easier each day it passes. So I hope you're safe more so than healthy wherever you are. So now that we've trimmed that in, I'm just creating some channels so we can get some separation because we don't want to fall in um, one big chunk. And then when I pull that back, um, it should be probably about an inch shorter and we'll be able to see let me just bend you around this way so I can use the mirror. Yeah, it sees better. Just so now we get those, you see those lighter pieces that I put in around Jordan's face. I did that intentionally. There's this little band there, that hairline part that I was talking about. And now when she wears it like this, we actually have the ability to be able to pull these out. If she's um, got her hair up and she wants to have it out a little bit, these aren't too, um, what would you say, lank. Like they're not lanky, they just don't hang there. I might actually make it just a little bit more, but we're going to go shallower. So it's just that first little piece. So this is again why I use geometry. So you can see that I've gone for a really, really narrow little triangle here. Just head down for me, babes. Perfect. And then the angle, we just want to take an extra quarter of an inch off just so it's got a bit of variation. That's it. And we'll just check to make sure it's got synergy with the sides. And because I'm happy with the back, I'll spin around so you guys can see. Um, we don't need to do any more. We'll head straight into that styling. Those of you who um, like the tools that we're using, the products, and uh, maybe a t-shirt or a cape, um, you can head to my online store on my website. I'll put the link in here. It will also be in the description. I do have also 
my YouTube store if you wanted to buy yourself a T-shirt. I get people asking me all the time. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it, maybe it's not visible to some people, the online store, but you can always go to adamcharcher.com and you can get yourself scissors, merch, all the goods to look the part like Jordan does. Yeah, see, that's better. It just, just that little bit, little bit higher look, they're going to make us smile. See? Why would you want to hide those cheeks? All right, let's do some styling. Jordan, I'm actually going to use this, um, this is a new styling wand I'm going to use. It's called a GHD Curve. It's quite an interesting shape, but I've used it um, a couple of times and I like it. So um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to make you guys sit there and fall asleep watching me do every section, but I'm going to do one to give you an example um, of how it works. And then from there, we'll, um, I'll like time lapse it so you guys can watch the process or you can skip forward. Chin down, gorgeous. Thank you. So I'm just going to, I'll just do this like, things going. And then we're going to just wrap this like that. Count to eight. Let it go. That's really annoying. It's nice and clean and slippery now. Just um, when you're using this tool, make sure you don't um, touch the uh, the wand because you will burn your hands instantly. So just see, it gives us that nice little wave. So I'm going to continue to go through and do all that, and then when you see this again, we're going to be done. I think, um, I think it works well. Let's spin uh, Jordan around so you can see the back. It's just a nice, I actually really like the shape of um, that, that um, GHD curve does. It's, I guess it's a bit different. It's not so, it sort of gives you more like a, rather than spiral, it's more like left, right, left, sort of like a, more of a, I guess you could call a traditional wave. Just grab myself some um, smooth setter. Probably a bit too much actually. And I'm just gonna spin you around this way. Just run some of this through it just to get rid of the static. Run your hands through it, you haven't touched it yet, it's your hair. We're gonna finish with some um, style fixer as well. Yeah, it feels good, huh? Yeah. Um, the mirror's here to our, well, our left, your right maybe, so I'm just spinning Jordan around so she can see herself in the mirror. So what I'll get you to do is just like, um, just to your head like this, Jordy. Other way, other way first, yeah. <laughs> Close your eyes, please. So when I do this, let's make sure we pull this out actually use this brush just to brush it from underneath. The idea of this is to just get all those little flyaways back in and just lock that shape in. You don't want to spray the hell out of it. Let's have a look, make sure that's good. Head up. A little bit on my hands too. Looks good, what do you reckon? Good job. Thanks. Right. <laughs> Thanks. I got right. Double thumbs up. Um, yeah, it's good. I mean, we had a good base to start with. Um, key points for me were, um, uh, first and foremost, I think, um, remembering that we have pre-lightened hair, or the hair had been previously lightened by myself. Making sure we look after conditions is very important. Matrix allows me to do that because um, I know a lot of companies have various um, uh, treatments that protect their hair during the lightening process, either pre-lightening, during or after. The thing that I like about the Matrix One Light Mask with Bonder inside, actually, it's in the actual powder. 
So we mix it up and then that's it really. There's nothing else to be done. So take, you can have a bit more confidence, but as I said, that doesn't mean that you can just like forget about the science of coloring hair and that's a, like a miracle cure. You still um, need to think about that. But I guess for me, the beautiful thing about that is it gives me that buffer. So whereas before I'd be hesitant to sort of like nudge it a little bit, I know that I can and the hair's still gonna be, I mean, it's gorgeous and shiny. I mean, I'm looking at the monitor down here. Um, stunning, like it actually looks shiny. Um, the uh, toner, uh, all those uh, colour formulas will be in the description and uh, with the haircut as you saw um, because I would follow those um, very strong and easy to follow geometric patterns not only do they give us great shape but it allowed me to just trim this in um, and you could see this side and that side I mean for me here and here like this is killer like it's all about face shape so yes length is important but for me the length is personal so um, could the ends have used the trim? Yeah, maybe. Um, are they like sort of the ends that you'll walk behind and go, my God, that lady needs a haircut, or that girl needs a haircut? No, they're not. So sometimes it's okay to just cut the front, style it, and, and leave it like that. And by following those sectioning patterns that I do, it makes us efficient. Like I said, being efficient, not fast. We don't want to rush nothing, so. Um, it was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, I think we're good. Seems we're in a day off, maybe we should pack up and go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'd like you also to do is, uh, Jordy's an amazing uh, athlete, personal trainer, so she gets really shy when I talk about it, but she's actually, she's actually a pretty incredible human. Very smart, very fun. Well, not really that funny, really. Sort of dry, <laughs> but she's very intelligent, obviously beautiful, and she's actually an amazing athlete and now personal trainer. So I uh, get over and follow her on Instagram. I'll do this thing here, actually in front of her, put it there. It's like Jordan Taylor Fit. Um, yeah, that'd be good. And uh, if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, please make sure you subscribe. If this is um, you following me and, and you're watching again, please share this video with someone who may benefit. I think it'd be good um, to share. People need to grow and without us sharing, people don't get to see it. Um, make sure you subscribe, please. And go and follow me on Instagram too. And if you need any things we use today, like if you guys ask where I get the t-shirts from, Jordy didn't wear hers today, but she wears it when she trains. I've seen her wearing it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you can go to the, my Instagram uh, shop or you can go to adamchacha.com, buy them, or you can buy them on YouTube. Um, yeah, I know people ask, so that's how you get them. Um, thanks to Matrix. Uh, see you next time from Canberra, Australia. It's, uh, see you later, mate. <laughs> Got to do something.